Since this pandemic began, remote work has blurred the traditional boundaries between work and home. Even when the workday is done, many of us, maybe most of us, find ourselves fielding messages that are work-related. Think about what you're doing right now, listening to this podcast in which you have both a professional and a personal interest. You're more relaxing than working right now, but it's not clear cut. For many, gone are the days we could simply knock on our manager's door. We're in the middle of a societal shift from an in-person environment to one blending, or maybe entirely shifting to a digital atmosphere. Leaders find themselves needing to digitally transform and adjust not only to a more digital world, but one in which work time and personal time is a little fuzzy. Enter social media. An increasing number of CEOs are now on at least one digital social platform. It's a good idea. It ensures visibility of brand and culture while signaling the organization is tech savvy. It also helps with the perception of personal connections by sharing personality. Major political leaders have already figured this out. Barack Obama, Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. In the corporate world, Mary Barra of General Motors, Adina Friedman of the Nasdaq Exchange, and Doug McMillan of Walmart are examples of CEOs online and in the conversation. And just being online isn't nearly enough anymore. Employees, customers, and all stakeholders want to see leaders engaging. And yes, that's tricky. There are conversations online, but it's also the place where arguments can happen. People get offended, they become outraged. So how do you engage more without offending more or upsetting more? Well, nobody said it was going to be easy. Today on Stories and Strategies, we talk with Craig Mullaney of Brunswick Group, who says authentic and accessible leadership has never been more important and that being online is just table stakes. My name is Doug Downs. My guest this week is Craig Mullaney of Brunswick Group in the Washington, D.C. office. Hello, Craig. Hello, Doug. Great to be with you. Uh, Great to be with you. How are things in D.C. today? It's a Friday as we record, so I imagine slowing down a little, or is it never slow down? Well, it's sunny and 70 degrees, which is pretty good. Um, So we'll get get outside and run today. It'll be a lovely day. Awesome. Craig, your background includes being a Rhodes Scholar at Oxford, a salutatorian at the United States Military Academy at West Point. You founded the Global Executive Program for Facebook, now Meta. You served as a senior advisor at the U.S. Agency for International Development and at the Pentagon during the Obama administration, and you were on the national security policy staff of President Obama's 2008 presidential campaign. You've also written a New York Times bestseller, The Unforgiving Minute, A Soldier's Education. There's a link to that in the show notes. And you've been on television various times on CBS, CNBC, BBC, NPR, The Colbert Report, and The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. Craig, what we're focusing on in this episode is the results of a study done by Brunswick Group as part of your Connected Leadership Research Program. So let's first focus on the methodology of the study, how it was done, who you talked with, uh, where do they live and work, and broadly, what kinds of questions were you asking? Yes, this is the third year we've done this study, and we've evolved the research approach every year. Uh, For 2022, we spoke with three audiences. Uh, The first were... um, Uh, employees, 3,600 employees at companies with more than 1,000 employees, so large companies, readers of financial publications. We spoke with 2,800 of those respondents across seven markets, Germany, Hong Kong, Saudi Arabia, Singapore, UAE, the UK, and the US. Um, And then we also spoke with 16 uh, CEOs uh, or their leadership teams at... um, 
companies are representing a range of sectors around the world, um, you know, collectively more than 3 million employees and, and more than one and a half trillion dollars in revenue. Um, and these are leaders we wanted to learn from, you know, what are the practical benefits um, that they found? Um, and, you know, what are the lessons for, you know, maybe companies who are earlier in their journey? And a clear message you got back is that we've gotten to the point where stakeholders, the people who believe they have a stake in the business or the leader's interests, they now expect the leader to be online. Uh, we've gotten to that part of the evolution now. That's right. It it you know we've been saying for the last couple of years that expectations are rising, and now we're saying, oh, the expectations are clear. This has now become a business imperative. And if you're not doing this, um, your competitors will, and you know you'll be the worst for it. Okay, and you use the term connected, right? So I want to dig deeper on what connected means because it 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 feels a bit subjective as an employee or a potential employee of an organization. What does it mean that I want to feel connected through social media to my leader? Well, the way we define uh, connected leadership in the research and the, the way the questions are structured is these are business leaders who are using social media to engage stakeholders. Um, so in 99% of cases, that's one of the major social media platforms like LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. Um, that they're not just present on the platform with a you know maybe a profile photo and a biography, but active. They're sharing they're sharing content with their communities. Okay, and and engaged. They're sharing content. I think of that as a broadcast style approach. As an employee, am I expecting that my leader is going to interact with me back and forth on social media, have conversations with me, comment on my posts? Is that the kind of thing I'm looking for? We think that, you know, we think that comes through and some of the responses that we heard. So we ask, you know, why do you as an employee prefer to work for a company with a CEO who's using social media? And what they talk about is the benefits of having an accessible leader, um, of transparency, of direct communication, um, we think that this has accelerated in part because of, you know, the communal experience of a pandemic and in times of crisis, wanting to feel closer to colleagues and management. Um, and social media happens to be, you know, one of the leadership technologies, if you will, that makes that um, possible when you can't be literally in the room together. And social media now enables us to not just um, be active in a written form, but on Twitter, there's you can you can broadcast live on Facebook. Of course, mm -hmm. there's Facebook Live. You can do it on Instagram. I don't see in the report where that's an expectation yet of the stakeholder. But if expectations are part of the evolution, somewhere down the road, is that expected? from the leader that they will start to participate or lead live events. Yeah. I, I think certainly the trend is away from just reading your leaders um, and what they put in text. So sort of seeing, hearing, and interacting with them in a live format. And that's the, you know, the growth of live video, the growth of live audio with platforms like Clubhouse, Twitter Spaces, you know, LinkedIn now has a live audio format. Um, and whether or not it's an expectation, doing so is absolutely an advantage for a business leader because, um, one, the platforms all reward use of audio, video, and visual communications. Uh, so the algorithms give preferential treatment to that type of content. So you'll just reach more people if you use more immersive, uh, more visual formats. And two, um, you know, attention spans are short. Um, people are scrolling through their um, through their feeds fast. Um, I mean, before I left Facebook four years ago, I, I want to say the average time spent on a post was about you know between one and two seconds. So you've got one second as a business leader to stop someone's thumb and get their attention, um, and doing so uh, doing so with video and you know really high quality visual communications. Uh, really helps.
podcasting. Now there's an idea. You listen to podcasts. Maybe a podcast is right for you or one of your clients. Stories and Strategies is a full podcast production company with clients in the United States, as well as Canada, Great Britain, and Australia. If you want to chat, send me an email, doug at storiesandstrategies.ca, and we'll set up that chat. Let's talk podcasts. And I have to selfishly ask, are, are podcasts somewhere on, on the horizon as an expectation of all leaders? Um, I, we think of po- podcasts as you know, signature content. Mm. Um, and you know, that is a trend amongst leaders having you know, sometimes video series, sometimes audio series, um, where on some periodic basis, say once a month, an executive is sitting down with, you know, another executive to talk about, you know, an issue that's particularly central to their, to their platform. Um, because there's, uh, audiences create habits. Um, they appreciate when there are sort of deep dives on topics. Um, and so I absolutely think we'll see leaders using, you know, podcasts. Some are already doing so, you know, quite effectively. One of the notes in the Connected Leadership Report is that social media platforms enable communications, quote, on a leader's own terms. Can, can, I, can I just push back a little bit on that? Do they? Uh, so they encourage people to respond. And that's not, the response is not always on your own terms. And in fact, we've seen some major media outlets disable questions and comments on many stories because there's a rabbit hole there on social media too. Yeah, I mean, I, the this maybe is like mostly a contrast with relying entirely on uh, earned media to, you know, shape the way that you or your company are perceived. Um, a lot of executives that, you know, I work with have some trepidation about engaging with media. Um, and even if they recognize the importance you know, very few are looking forward to sitting down with a reporter who could really take that interview in any direction. Um, there's obviously, it's, it's very important for leaders to engage with traditional media. There's a you know great degree of trust um, in those audiences, and there's the built-in reach of media platforms. Um, but say in the midst of a crisis or in an issue that just doesn't merit media attention, you want to have a channel directly to your stakeholders, and that's what social media provides. Um, and yes, you can't control per se what happens below the fold in the comment comment <laughs> threads. Yeah. Um, but you know, we see some of the, the more effective leaders look at that as an opportunity. Um, they, you know, they're looking to respond with the critical comments because they want to do more than just preach to the choir. Um, you know, they want to, you know, convert, uh, convert minds, change opinions about their organization. And, you know, this is a way to do so. Yes. And they can use it as, as anecdotal, uh, the way people are thinking about certain things. If I may there, I think that's, you know, the, the flip side of having concerns and fears about what happens in, in the comment section is thinking of, you know, what I think is a greater risk for an executive is that they are trapped inside a bubble. And social media does give you a highly tuned listening device to see what's bubbling up from your employees, your investors, your customers. Um, and, you know, many executives find that incredibly valuable to keep a finger on the pulse of their stakeholders. Yeah, I would agree. And there's this bizarre sense of anonymity for some people responding on social media, um, and in some cases, I suppose they are anonymous, but you get to uh, the ugly truth sometimes of what people are really thinking. Yeah, and that's um, it's worth hearing even if you don't like it. Agreed, agreed. Another advantage um, in working with social media is that idea of setting the narrative uh, for something. And, and that in that sense, truly you are... Um, at least persuading the communication on your own terms. If you often we see this in political discourse where, where something has taken place and and blue 
wants to set a narrative that, that goes one way and red wants to set a narrative that goes another, and people will respond and, and have discourse kind of based on that narrative. Does that get to a bit of, of what you're trying to get across there and the advantages of participating on social media? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it, one thing I, you know, I'll say to an executive that says, I don't want to be on social media is I say, you're already on social media and I can show you, I can show you the conversations that are happening about you and your company, but you don't have a voice in that conversation. And that gives you no opportunity to influence the, the narrative, the discourse. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, there's, unfortunately there's no escaping it. There's no escaping it now. It's the world that we live in and it's to your advantage to master the tools that are available. Yeah, the fishbowl is getting bigger. Uh, from my own experience, I can share that I think most leaders shape their approach to communication by wanting to avoid rebuke from their board, that mm. the chairperson of the board is always at the forefront of their mind. And if, if it's the chairperson of the board we're talking about, it, it's uh, the most persuasive stakeholders or, or shareholders in the company. W what I'm saying is, so many leaders are extremely cautious as a base approach mm. um, and then trying to be genuine or casual on top of that approach, which ends up coming across as kind of rehearsed and fake. And they hire presentation coaches and, and media training and all that stuff. But it, that, that base approach is how they stay alive, at least for a few years in that really high paying job. I think boards are, I think the perspective of boards, and I, we hear this from the directors and chairs um, nominating committees we work with, is that their expectations of C-suite executives have changed as well. And they've seen that um, engaging with a broader set of stakeholders is ultimately preserved shareholder value. And that a CEO who is not um, attuned to and responsive to, for instance, strong demands from employees in the wake of a social crisis or a major, you know, breaking news issue, which you know has relevance for the company and its employee base, that presents a real enterprise risk. And so they're looking afresh at leaders with strong communication skills and engagement skills, as that's part of the role of a modern CEO. It's no longer enough to just deliver the numbers. Now, this is all part of your Connected Leadership Research Program at Brunswick Group. Tell me tell me a bit more about that program, uh, who it reaches out to, and, and the kind of clientele that you bring into it. The Brunswick Group is an international critical issues advisory firm. We work exclusively with uh, corporate clients. Um, these are typically large multinational companies, but not always and um, provide strategic communications counsel around their most pressing issues, whether it's a you know, major acquisition, a restructuring, a crisis, um, reshaping their employee value proposition. And so in the course of that work, we serve alongside many C-suite executives. And we set out three years ago with this program to ground our advice in really a more in-depth appreciation of stakeholder expectations and to understand how the role of a modern business leader has evolved and will evolve. And what we found through that research is that um, there are much higher than expected expectations from stakeholders that hmm. their leaders today um, are adept communicators capable of an engaged with social media platforms in particular. And so uh, we have an ongoing research platform of publishing thought leadership on the topic, evolving the sort of the state of the art of leadership in today's uh, corporate world. Um, and we work with, uh, at this point, hundreds of clients around the world to develop their own leadership approaches um, that are holistic and integrated, that Think about social and digital alongside traditional media engagement, um, investor engagement, and so forth. Okay. And where can people find out more about that? If you go to brunswickgroup.com forward slash connected leadership, we, uh, you can subscribe to our 
newsletter. You can see research from this year and past years. Um, of course, I'm active myself on Twitter and LinkedIn uh, at Craig M. Mullaney. Um, and I'd be delighted to have you as part of our community. Craig, thank you so much for your time today. It was great to be with you. If you'd like to send a message to my guest, Craig Mullaney of Brunswick Group, best way to do that, he mentioned his Twitter handle is at Craig Mullaney. We've also got a link to his LinkedIn profile in the show notes. Stories and Strategies, co-production of JGR Communications and Stories and Strategies podcasts. We're hoping you might help us connect and engage with people online with more people. All that really takes is, is a single click. You can follow us on Twitter or Instagram. Um, or LinkedIn, but on Apple or Spotify, if you would just leave a rating on this podcast, leave a four-star or five-star rating. I'm, I'm not choosy. I love the five-star, but the ratings really help tell the algorithm that we are worth finding, and we'd really appreciate it. More than anything else, if you like this episode, would you do us a favor and tell just one friend? Thanks for listening.